Hello and welcome to episode 12 of our project hybrid bike build here on Motors for the Masses. Now, this week we are doing lots of different things. What are we doing, Malcolm? All sorts. We're going to start with the front mud guard bracket thing, and then we're going to move on to we're going to move on to popping the engine in the hole, and then we're going to stick this exhaust on and decide where we're going to hack it apart and mock up the new one. Yes. And that's uh, hopefully going to take us to the end of the episode. If we get a chance, we might have a look at the carburetors because we have brand new carburetor kits, but we'll come to that a little bit later. So let's get cracking. So first of all, we'd like to thank everybody for viewing and commenting on all our previous videos. And on the last video, we posed the question as to what we're going to do with the colour of this bracket. Now, we've had lots of comments, thank you very much, and we've had three suggestions. One is polished alloy, one is gunmetal, the same as the frame's going to be, and one is black. And something Malcolm said last week, and someone said on one of the comments, and I forget who it was, I apologise, but... Um, they said, if we do it gunmetal, it's going to look like a really long frame, and that might look a bit odd. So we have decided it's going to be black. And we couldn't decide whether it's to be black satin or black gloss. Oh, um, gloss, because it matches everything else. Exactly that, yes. Gloss will match the lights, will match the suspension, and will match the handlebars. And so, the other black parts we decide to accent later on, and there may be some. Yes, so it's going to be shiny gloss black so thank you very much for that and we've had another comment yeah that's a good comment and uh, someone said about making sure hope we're going to cut down these bolts well i'll be honest i kind of like them as they are yeah indeed so no makes for an interesting ride <laughs> <laughs> of course we're gonna yes, we'll be cutting down. <laughs> we're gonna get shorter bolts 20 millimeter bolts but for now we're just going to cut down these ones so we can spin the wheel so that's the first thing we're going to do and is it by magic <laughs> Get off! <laughs> it's free! It's good that, isn't it? Yeah, see? Just like that. <laughs> so we've come up with a plan for the mudguard. Now, as it is now, it is literally half a millimetre away from the tyre. That's pretty close. So what we're going to do is flatten these. This is where the original cable for the brake caliper went through here. We're not going to need that right now, so we're going to flatten these and make it completely flat and actually pull it out a little bit away from the tyre. And then it's going to go up. Now, I want this raised a little bit, so the mud guard is actually going to be here, like that, mm. just off the tyre. So it's going to come up about half an inch, three quarters of an inch, and we're going to use a short mud guard. So we're going to cut down here, like so, and have this half of the mud guard. Then we've still got this for the brake cable, and we're going to put another one on the other side for the speedo cable. And then, this is obviously going to be black to match the uh, the rest of the other black stuff. So that will sit in there, sort of like that. I think that looked quite nice. So once we've done that, we'll straighten this out, we're going to cut off the tops here, and raise it up and weld pieces in to fit. So that's what we're going to do now. Now with the whole lengthening of this thing, we're a little unsure as to whether or not this bracket provides any um, torsional strength or whatever you want to call it, stop the forks twisting. Um, so because we're going to be cutting the top off of this and straightening these pieces out and moving it out a little bit, when we add the piece of metal in, we're going to add it across the entire thing, so just a bridge. Hang on, if I can pull this out, I'll show you. These are sitting down. So we're cutting off across here and here, so technically we're removing this top piece. So if we add in the piece of metal across the entire piece and then pop this back on the top like a little hat, I'll uh, maintain the strength of it, I hope. This one, it's got a nice clearance around that now. By the time we add the top piece in and put our hat back on, that'd be great. Just got to bend this side out as well, which is actually a little bit more tricky because it's brackets completely different this side. Yes. 
and I don't want to cut myself on the bit I've just cut. So if that is bent do. out, we don't need to straighten out this kink down here? No, that can stay exactly as is, yeah. we're making the room up here that we need, and then we'll add our pieces on and put our hat back on the top. Obviously that'll be out here, but it's not wanting to bend, just at the moment there's not enough room. But Obviously it'll have to come out at an angle, like so, just to meet. Just to join the two. But that'll be up there like that. Yep. Excuse the noises again, we've got people strewing their grass, inconsiderate people cutting their own grass. I know, how, how dare they use spring for what it's for? Oh, I know, it's disgusting. <laughs> Get these bent in exactly the position we want them. Yeah. Now you've bent that, it's got a kink in it. Yeah, that's because this side hasn't bent. Yeah. I need um, to bend this side out as well, it, won't, it won't, doesn't want to go. It might pay to cut this little hoop off. Possibly, yeah, we'll grind it off on the inside. Because that's only for this, that's what this rubber grommet thing is for, to slip into there. We could so really that goes in there. Idea. We could do, but it'll need bending. The problem is, it puts it rather close to that tyre, because it's on the inside. Well, maybe, we'll take it off and weld it on the outside. Yeah, excuse me. And then we can reuse that, put the cable back through there, Yeah. reuse this hoop, Yeah. and then the hoop that's on the mud guard we'll just use up for the speedo cable. Yeah. yeah, job done. So we're going to raise this up about three quarters of an inch, now I'd just like to add a note. When we said before about the um, mud guard being black, it's not going to be black, it's going to be burnt orange, the same colour as the tank. And the bracket is going to be gunmetal. So, there you go. It just so happens that the piece of flat bar we were going to use is approximately three quarters of an inch. So we put that each side like that, ta -da, and then pop our hat on the top. That'll give us the desired height and maintain some strength in the possibility of this holding the forks in position. Job done. Ish. So this is just to see mocking up, not far off, pretty close, we've just got to pull it out a slight bit, maybe two mil either side. Yeah. And then it's we're not, not quite central. Good it? to weld on. Yeah. Alright, just give it a tweak. So we measured from the inside edge to the inside edge of this bracket and it was 10.2 millimetres. So 10.2 centimetres. So we've done the same on here, um, so it's equal bend on either side and that's pretty good. Mm. Pretty pleased with that. So basically we're gonna weld that onto that. Yep. Either side. I'm just gonna weld it a bit more on here first. Yeah. To make it stronger. Tack it onto those and then remove the whole thing and weld it up proper. And that's good and we don't need to move this because that is now well off the tire. Yeah. The hoop. So yeah, it's fine. We're good to go. And then all we've got to do is cut down the mudguard and um, shape that to fit. Nice. Result And there we are, it's in. It's very solid, it's all ground down, so it's uh, nicely finished off. And we're gonna powder coat that, and um, you won't notice any difference. And a lot of this will be underneath the mud guard anyway. But that spins nice and freely. Don't worry about the caliper noise. And there you go. Very solid, pleased with that. Now comes the next part. like so. So we're going to use this rolled edge and then we're going to cut it off just before these bolts here and shape it the same as this. So that'll be at the back there. 
and that'll be very nice indeed and that'll be half a mud guard and that sits just about right for a scrambler pleased with that yeah yeah place and this now cut down that sits nicely like so obviously we've got to drill the holes and screw it in but that is where it will be but once that is painted burnt orange the same as the tank and this is gunmetal that will look pretty damn sweet love it what we're gonna do with the wheels let's stand like that yeah keep them like that we're gonna polish the rim <laughs> If you like, but I think we should get the wheels like that. <laughs> I don't know, are you into rim polishing? Yeah, I think we should polish the rim and polish the fork. For fork's sake, you want to polish the rim? I want to, poli I want to polish both rims, I want to polish the fork and... You're not polishing my rim. <laughs> you polish your own rim. Oh, my rim's fucked. Is it? <laughs> I um, think it's one that's forked. Yeah. <laughs> oh god, shut up. So now with this bolted on, this was actually quite difficult to do because getting the holes lined up, the drill holes lined up, was not easy to make sure that they're all in line so it doesn't twist or be too high one side and too low the other side. But we got there and it's looking pretty good. What do you reckon? I'm happy with it. Let's get it on. Yeah. As uh, Barry White would say, yeah, Barry White. Bloody serious, do you? You look pretty serious. I don't, I'm good at that. That's what makes me an actor. An actor? Yes. So the first thing we're going to do is drain the oil out of the bottom because we're going to take the oil filter off to hopefully get the engine in a bit easier. Now in doing so we've noticed that there seems to be a bit of a crack in the sump here, all the way down here, down there and round the back. Like, it goes up along there. We don't know if it's been repaired in the past or if it's cracking ready to go, but we know someone who can weld this, so that's not a problem. We're going to get the sump off because we're going to strip down the engine anyway and get that fixed. And it could be that that's where it broke and they put it back in and welded the inside. Maybe. Oh boy. Yeah, I'm just trying to see if it's. <laughs> see what I did there? Yeah. <laughs> I never get my left and right do up and undo. 
done properly. Done properly? That's Correct. Nice, good enough. Yep. So how black is this going to be? Well, I guess fairly. Nothing coming out yet. There gotcha! And the washer? Yeah. Yeah. Not too bad. No, it's, 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 there's still a little bit of clear in there. Is there any bits in it? It, um, it smells very oily. It does. Just run a bit over your finger you've got there and just see if there's any bits in it. Doesn't seem to be. Seems quite smooth actually. It's not bronzy, is it? No, not at all. Alright, that's cool. That's a good sign. That means the engine hasn't been thrashed and it's not about to collapse. Well, there's no bits in there, so that's, that's a good start. It's still green, look. So now we're going to whiz off this, except that's not the right size spanner. That end is, that's good. That's, quite, saying? that's quite tight that. <laughs> I don't want to break it. Hmm. That is worrying. Seal. It did. Feels okay. Feels like it's undoing and not twisting. Yep. Oh, uh, leakage. Lots of leakage. That's uh. Yeah. We need uh. Need a bucket. Oh, that's my new cloth. That's now an oily cloth. No, that's my new orange cloth. Brand new. That's what I washed my face with. <laughs> <laughs> Drop that in the bucket. It's falling around the wood, isn't it? That's a good thing. Yep, that's pretty good. It's very green. Oh, oh what was that? That was a, uh, a ring. Oh, okay. Off the end of the filter bottle, isn't it? Alright, well, we'll get your hand in there, fish, fish out. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right, so now we've made that completely vulnerable, and uh, <laughs> yeah, but there is a big lump missing off the front. It's going to make it a lot easier to get the engine back in the bike. Yeah, and then all we've got to do is just remember the no oil filter in it, and uh, we can squeeze that back on once it's in the bike. Yeah, I'm uh, actually a bit concerned because it seems that this engine came out of a Peugeot 408 <laughs> convertible. CC, yeah, what cabriolet. About, uh, what did that stand for? 408cc. Did they even make one of them? I think they did. No, it was a 307cc, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I don't of course know. it didn't. It's a 408cc Honda engine. Woohoo! I don't do French cars. No. I don't like any French cars. You can't be racist. No, I just said I don't like we French We like the cars. French. The French are great. But the cars are shit. <laughs> So once you've got the main bolt back in, the spacer goes in there, that slides in there like so, and just tighten this back up. I need to find the nut that we had to go on here. And the engine is pretty much supported, so this is back on, 
we've got to put the metal one back on the front here. This one. There's six anti C's in there when we put it all back together properly. Yeah, that's the big one. I'm going to manually we'll probably help us put the engine in there. Probably. <laughs> Or two men looking at manual. Mm, Maybe no, not. that's not really a thing, is it? <laughs> Let's get the crankcase on. So the engine's in, mostly. Now we need to get the exhaust on, but we are not using this at all. So we're going to cut it off. We're going to lose ourselves about an inch there just to play with, and all of that can just go away. And then we'll refit there. We'll give it a quick clean up. As you it's a bit crusty around these inserts, uh, and then we'll uh, put it on there and. See what we can do with the new exhaust. Right, let's get the carburetor in. I think it's the cutouts what make it allowed to go in a bit more. Well, that one's on there to avoid everything. right up against the frame. Yeah, this one is a two. But if we were to remove five mil of the rubber, of the rubber, that would enough. slide on and give clearance at the back. Yeah, but then I need to make sure I can only get these filters. Yeah, which gets on the same size. Yeah, which is really boring because I want some nice new ones. <laughs> There's enough space down here though to be able to get the tubes that bend and go down. Yeah, but tube, tubes and things create... These are just so boring! Restrictions, etc. Okay, so putting the exhaust on, we've lubed up with some plus gas. Um, just to make sure... Only the studs so I've lubed up these. I need to make sure these things are up. So we finish that sentence just to make sure that um, they slip on quite nicely. Yeah, they're not going in the holes. No, they're not. Oh. Ah, 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 there's one thick screw and one thin screw. No, 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 what I mean is the exhaust sight in. The exhaust sight in? The exhaust sight in. They need to slot right down so that sh um, like shim bit. Are you sure about that? that? Yeah. Because they slide into the holes in the signal head. They are in, they're in as far as they go, and that's the point of these. As far as they go. The point of these is to bring them down. No, they're just a clamp. I thought that was meant to go all the way in. I honestly that, don't think it does. If, if, if with these, there's hardly any hell, I suppose it might, yeah. There's, there's not a lot of thread though, is there? No, there isn't. Alright, well, let's just get the Hang on, let's, let's just on. double check. Oh, it looks right. How far in is that? Yeah, about the same as this. Yeah. I thought it needed to go. Yeah, no, it's getting metal, so we can't yeah, get it no, further. It must be right. Bite it, and then get the next bit. What is that, 13? Yeah, that one is. Not ideal. Maybe we'll pull the stud out and put a longer one in. You know. So here we are with the exhaust bolted back on. And as you can see, we've cut it off, and it just finishes here. Now, we're not quite sure what we're going to do here at the moment. Um, it's obviously on this side. So it's going to be very difficult to root it to both sides. Originally I wanted to have a wide piece so it goes out this side and out the other side. That's not really possible. So one solution is just to um, put a piece on the end here and then just dump it out like that, just like a, a little angle like that, which I think should be enough. I get the feeling it might be too loud. It might be too loud, we're not going to know that until we actually start the bike up. So that's going to be the plan, we're going to start the bike up. I think find out how loud it is, and then make a decision from there. Yeah. We might have to put a silencer on the back, in which case it will just be a short, stubby silencer. Um, with a, a pipe, I don't know. If we have to put a silencer on it, I think we should route it through to the other side and put the silencer sideways underneath. Now, of course, being a scrambler, a lot of the scramblers have the exhaust coming down the side, which I quite like, but this is just impossible to route like that without messing about with the flow of the, the header 
and remapping it. It's going to be too much, too awkward, and I don't know if I like that look. I like the way these are collected down the side here. Um, remember, this is a hybrid, so it's a cafe scrambler. It's a cafe racer stroke scrambler, and it's something unique, something we are making, not following the trend of everybody else. So I think I like the idea of just dumping the exhaust, if that's possible. Yeah, but if it's too loud, I wonder if we can tuck it around this side and dump this side of the small silencer sideways underneath. And the reason I say that is because we don't have an exhaust hanger. No, we don't. So we can't have a big old pipe sticking out here. Good point. So if that happens, then we're going to have to put a, white, a little elbow on here. We'll maybe cut a bit more of a collector off and we'll run it around and we'll tuck it across. And make a bracket up underneath here and then we can dump out this side just sort of on an angle okay downwards it might be an idea to cut off before the end of the collector anyway to yeah. get rid of this inner pipe because there's an inner pipe there yeah which is welded up to about here on the inside of the collector i think that pipe is actually part of that this and collector this piece that's welded on the outside is hollow all these four pipes go into this this is hollow i can get my fingers all around here yeah and this stops here just on the end about here yeah, on the so inside if we were to cut that off if we cut that off um, there that gives us Something okay. where we can bend on it if we need yeah. to. Yeah. So that's yeah. that. Looking good. Right. I want to get the tank on and get the seat on and see what this looks like. So do I actually. Yeah, I'm let's excited. Do it. Let's do it. <laughs> T. So for today we've got the exhaust on, the engine in, the mudguard on. Uh, I think we've had quite a good day. Mm. Um, obviously it's a bit tricky getting that engine in, but um, we'll work that out to make sure that we don't do any yeah. damage to the frame. I think I'll want to take powder coated in and out a few times. Yeah, just to make sure that we know exactly how to put it in and out. And we're going to put some jean material or maybe a bit of carpet around the frame when we do put it in, just to make sure we don't do any damage to the powder coat. Yes. Um, we're not going to do the carb kit today, uh, simply because it's pointless to do it right now. Because, That's quite long-winded as well. Yeah, because we've got to take the engine apart and the carbs apart anyway to clean them all out. So we don't want to do a rush job. We'll be doing that another day. Yeah, we'll do a recording, maybe just a video just on that. However, weeks. we have put the tank on. Yes. We have put the seat on. And would you like to see what it looks like? Because <laughs> I think it looks awesome. I like it. Okay. Look at that! I'm loving that. I imagine obviously the frame's going to be gunmetal, this is going to be burnt orange, that's going to be burnt orange, be this will be black, there's going to be a side panel in there, that's what we're going to be doing next time, we're going to be making the side panel and a raised oval for the numbers. So we'll be doing a bit of intricate um, metal work next time, but for now I think it'll look absolutely immense. Super pleased with this. Love it, it looks mad and it feels like a proper bite, I'm just going to get on it for a second. Yes, awesome, absolutely awesome. Sorry, my head's out of shot. <laughs> I love it, I absolutely love it. Look at that, look. Oh, I can't wait to get this on the road, up and running. It really does feel good. So, that's it for today's episode. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back next time with more on the bike. And in fact, next week, we've got another 125 at AR. We've got um, a sort of a, a street bike meets um, cruiser meets, I don't know, well, tune in to find out. But until then, please ride and drive carefully, and please subscribe, like, and share this video, and leave any comments you like. We love your comments, and we are so pleased with your feedback. Thank you very much for joining us. And I don't know if you've noticed, but we're over 7,000 subscribers now. So when we hit 10,000 subscribers, there's going to be another big giveaway coming. So watch out for that one. And until then, bye-bye. Have fun. Yeah, that.